Hey, what's up, guys? It is Dan from Fight With, and today I am joined by somebody. It's a long overdue interview with today's guest. If you guys know when I first rebranded to Fight Wave, that he was the very first fighter I spoke to from our rebrand, and we had spoken once prior, but it has been over a year and a half in the making since to get this interview in place just because of schedules and whatnot. But make no mistake, since then, he has gone on an absolute tear, looking to make it 4 0 in 2024. And in my opinion, one of the hottest Bantamweight prospects to come out of Australia right now i think with this win at hex 5 series 33 on november 23rd he's going to be poised for a massive 2025 and i cannot wait to see what's in store for him on this upcoming fight i'm privileged to be joined by my good friend the slickness thickness mr colby thickness colby thank you so much for your time brother and oh my goodness man a year and a half since we last spoke Mm -hmm. last time we spoke you were injured you hadn't fought at all in that calendar year now you're netting your fourth fight of the year and momentum is at an all-time high how quickly the sport changes am i right first and foremost bro how have you been what have you been up to firstly thank you for the wonderful intro as always you do that the best i appreciate it my friend yeah like you said it's been a while since our first chat and then i think um what was the last one Maybe when I was two and zero, or when I was one, and I was. I think it was just. I think it was just after your second ever pro fight, or just yeah, right yeah. before or after, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, this year's been this year's been good. There's been last year was a good year. It started off good, but then everybody knows my uh, track record with injuries and just shit like that. So that's a rough one. But I'm in a very good position now. I came out of my last fight unscathed. I got the title fight in next weekend. So things are things are very well. Things are this is what I wanted to happen since I've started fighting. It's taken a little bit longer, but I'm finally getting up to that four fights a year, which is what I really wanted to sort of get up to as a pro level. Just keeps that activity going. Definitely. And for the people around you for a very long time, they've all spoken of your quality. And even when we spoke before, we talked a lot about the quality that you bring into the octagon and also just in the training room. And it feels like, like you said, it's just been about being able to showcase that, whether it's just frustrations due to injuries and not being able to make it to the fights because of other circumstances, or if it's just things out of your control. We've really said that if the, if Colby Thickness can get three to four fights in a calendar year, I think the whole world is going to find out just how special of a young talent you are. And it's crazy to think that despite all of that, you're still only 25 years of age with such an impressive record. It feels like just time has been on your side with all of these adversities and hurdles. What has kind of been your biggest takeaway when you reflect on, on the years, the tough years they've had, you know, 2022 and 2023, and looking back at them in 2024 after all the success that you've had as of late? I think it's just very reassuring to me that Obviously, I'm lucky with my age and where I started off in my journey, but it's just good because I know that I always talk about how I have a big picture um, thought process with everything. So the injuries really taught me, like, you have set goals. Everybody does. They might have a weekly goal, a monthly goal, a yearly goal, and it's just being able to adjust to your current situation and where you want to get to. So obviously, I would have had goals. would have wished I sort of had a few more fights years ago, but you can't really control what has happened in them situations so it's just learning and growing and now i feel like what it's taught me the most is i'm very adaptable so say for my first fight in bali and chengu back in july i actually tore my calf uh i think two weeks into the camp so i spent the last four weeks of a fight camp on an assault bike just doing that and i think i might have had the last couple of days of or five weeks where I was able to properly train sort of thing. But say if I didn't go through all the hardships I did before, just being able to train and knowing that I can get to a fight fit regardless of the injuries and stuff like that, it's a real sort of um, almost like an ace on my sleeve, like a trump card, knowing that I've done a lot of camps compromised. So when I'm in a state I am now where I'm fit, I'm healthy, I'm ready, I can go back to back. It just feels like sort of all the momentum's behind me now. Definitely. And I think it talks volumes about just the experience that you carry at such a young age and just mindset. I know for you, mindset has been a very important thing, especially in those tough times, really looking to just kind of reevaluate and come in with a sharper perspective on the fight game, which definitely 
as it, you know obviously appears you've definitely came back re-energized repurposed in the fight game and i know for you definitely just looking to disconnect even from social media i know you took a little bit of an absence or hiatus from social media to really just be able to to tune in on the mental side how important was that for you to take that time away focus on yourself and be able to put away something as kind of you know addicting and you know really just a vice nowadays in the form of social media and focus on your fighting career your relationships and just more importantly yourself I think it's crucial, bro. So even after um, this fight, I'm going to take another sort of break where I just sort of do my post sort of have to do after the fight and then just delete everything off my phone for that week. And then, because you know what it's like, everybody does it. You wake up, the first thing you do is you start scrolling and all it takes is for you to see one negative piece of news or something and sort of dictate how your day goes and that sort of thing. And I always say at the end of the day, the whole thing's um, a false reality. It's just people, everybody knows, it's just people showing their highlight reel. So obviously if it's part of the fight game where you have to have your socials, you have to be up, you have to create your brand, keep doing the post and everything like that. Like, don't get me wrong, I do love that aspect of when I'm in it, but I do understand like, um, especially after wins and that, like there is a lot of, people and you get a lot of dopamine just from all the messages or like things are popping up and you're like this is great and then two days later it's obviously all going away because people are into the next thing so it's not getting i always say it's not getting too caught up in the highs and the lows of it which is why i like to take the break because when you're hot you have to maximize your time but i do think it's creating that balance of where like i said i do prefer after fights where i do sort of get off the socials for a week and just focus on being present and doing the day-to-day -day activities and just sort of having like that freedom where um i don't have to reach out to anybody people don't have can't really contact me sort of thing and some people may not like that but i find i definitely use it as like a good mental reset and then i sort of come back um re energize so even with a social media aspect i'm like all right i want to start doing some posts and get some more traction because we've had that break but i'm sure you know what it's like running a instagram page where it's like that burnout can creep creep in very easily and once it's in it's very hard to sort of get out of that sort of spiral and feel like that enthusiasm to get behind it again definitely i definitely agree wholeheartedly where like it feels like there's almost a sort of dependence on, on that validation that you get from social media at times. And especially mm -hmm. as a fighter, when, you know, the highs are the highs and the lows are the lows, especially from a fan or, you know, community perspective where in, if you're winning and you're on top of the world, the support is overwhelming. And then when you're, you know, coming off a loss or whatnot, you hear crickets from all your supporters and then you have people crashing you in the comments. It's it's really just a duality of, of the sport that we're in. And also you're talking about just, you talk about the support and how that can be overwhelming and that's a big dopamine i think one thing i've really loved about you and colby and what you've been able to do is not focus on on the praise of the past but the praise of the present i know you know a lot of times people can ca get caught up in potential and talking about you know let's say somebody talking highly of you at a very early point in your career and then focusing on those words from very early on whereas for you it feels like you've been focused on just fine-tuning your craft and if the praise comes with it along the way you look at it relative to when it's being praised how important has it been for you to to not get overwhelmed by the successes like you said you know focusing on what you can control taking it a day at a time how important has it been for you to to not take those compliments of the past you know talk about a guy like Adesanya giving you praise on the mic talking about that not letting those type of things get to your head but focusing on the present and the praise that comes in the current moment how important has that been for you It's very important, but I also think I'm naturally a fairly grounded person and in the sense that it's pretty obvious, but I don't do any of this for praise, for notoriety or anything. Like, I, I do this because I love it. It's always that question people ask, if you wake up and money wasn't an issue, what would you do tomorrow? And, like, my answers are going to be the exact same thing I do every day because I just wake up and I love what I get to do day to day life sort of thing. So it is, like, oh, I do say it is reassuring to have the support from the best people in the world in your industry back in you but just because they're supporting you doesn't mean you're going to make it you still have to do all this work you still have to put in all the hours of fighting tape study watching your nutrition sleeping properly s and c so i'm fortunate in the sense that i love my craft and i want to do this for as long as i can as long as i'm staying healthy and fit and everything like that but there is nothing that i would prefer to be doing say even now 
on a Monday morning doing this. I got to train twice this morning. I got to do, a, do an interview talking about myself, talking about my fights, just sort of getting this aspect of it. And I get to teach a salvo, train again. And it's just this day-to-day -day lifestyle, which I love. So the praise is nice when it comes across because it's, like I said, it's reassuring that you're on the right path. But I don't look too much into it. It's more just because I love what I do. Definitely. And you mentioned, you know, just loving what you do and you emphasize really just having great people around you a little bit ago. And I think that when you look at not just your adversities that you've had to endure, but everyone at Freestyle, it feels like when I was talking to members from the gym from 22 to 23, it felt like the gym was kind of going through a, a, not a tough period per se, because everyone was thankfully healthy and thankfully, you know, doing well mentally for the most part. But it feels like the gym in from an MMA perspective had its like a fair share of ups and downs, whereas it feels like now the gym is better than ever. 2024 has been a great year for the gym. I think, you know, you look at what Justin's been able to do. You look at what you've been able to do, Kasib, Seb, Jared, you know, Amina, just staying active, staying ready. I think that's the biggest thing about freestyle is from a, you know, a year or two ago where everyone was struggling to stay healthy or, you know, injuries were coming and going, you know, adversity was going left and right factors outside of the fight game that you couldn't control. It feels like the team has really come back and rallied behind each other. When you look at the team at freestyle and the adversity you guys have overcome together, how much has it meant to you to have those people by your side and be able to look at them and say, hey, we went through this really dark period and now we're better because of it and we're back better than ever in 2024? Oh, it's just paramount. Obviously, it starts from the top. So you got obviously Joe with the coaching ability. You have Volk as like sort of like the head horse, the lead teammate sort of thing. Then even people behind the scenes like Tara and that who just help out with the day-to-day -day stuff, help out with the managing. And then the actual fighters itself, all the boys and girls there. It's just good because, yeah, I would say last year was a dark year, but it was just hard. It was just different in the sense that there's lots of, injuries between us and just just things wasn't clicking like if it was a fight team but it's like we weren't able to rally and get as many fights as you want from like a fight team sort of thing well at least in my case that was definitely for sure but now if you look at this i'm going to be coming into four fights if casey gets on in december he's going to have his fifth fight which is incredible five fights in the calendar year amina's had a few Justin's obviously had a few he's on with me. Hopefully Jarrett will get one before the year's out. Seb won the belt. So there's so much going on now at the team. And it sort of feels like we're getting that snowball effect. We're all just sort of each achieving our own things in the journey, but it's sort of adding to the collective as a team. And it's just creating that momentum effect where it feels like we're going to kickstart 2025 with the ball rolling. Definitely. And I love that you mentioned it starting from the top down. I feel like when you talk about a coach in the scene that doesn't get enough credit, I know he's regarded as one of the best coaches in Australia, but it feels like for what he's done for everyone in the team at Freestyle MMA, mm -hmm. Tara, you know, the ma your manager Tara and, you know, coach Joe Lopez do not get enough credit for being able to turn things around. I think for this team, you know, like you said, not necessarily the results you guys wanted in 2023 in terms of momentum. But being able to get the team back on track, really taking things into their own hands. I know, you know, Joe really, especially with Justin, you know, looking to get things back on track for him. He got wanting to get him a fight very eager there. And then especially with you, you know, you struggling to get an opponent regionally and then just, you know, other things outside of your control, getting a fight with Kangu. You know, how important has it been for you to have the head honcho in the form of Joe Lopez just really put his foot down, assert an iron fist and say, this is going to happen we're going to make it happen. How much does that motivate you knowing that you've got a guy at the top who cares so much for this team? It is his, you know, it is his baby in another sense. Oh, it's crucial. Like I'm very lucky because the only reason I have this sort of level of activity I do is because Joe has the connections over in Chengu with Andrew and Donnie. And that's only purely like I was, uh, I'm pretty sure I was the first um, Australian to ever main event that show, which is like a cool achievement, like international headline at 25, which is just something cool to have on a resume and a cool experience. But yeah, without Joe, I would have fought on Hex this year against Manu. And then I was, I've was i been trying to find fights since then. Obviously, we had the New Zealand card, which couldn't find opponents. We had the July card, which we couldn't find opponents. And then even this card, Joe had the connection overseas to put the feelers out and find an international opponent because currently on the Oz scene, there's no real other Bantamweights who are up there with me in terms of ranking level skills or anything like that, I believe. So it's just crucial to have someone like Joe who's we've been around this 
game in this industry for so long because otherwise, who knows, I would have had this fight in Manu and this might be my second fight this year and I'm perfectly healthy throughout this whole year. So obviously when you're injured and that, you can't fight. It is what it is. But when I'm fit and I'm healthy, I want to go, which is why I got the two fights booked back to back. But if I'm sitting on my hands waiting just because I can't find fights, it would, it would have done my head in. So I'm very fortunate to have Joe in that position where he knows everybody has been around games so he can create these opportunities for me. Absolutely. And then, of course, you know, one thing that really stood out to me that you said there, and I would love to kind of just elaborate on, it feels like the scene right now in Australia is in a weird kind of recalibration kind of momentum. It's like, it's in that kind of part of the year where we've seen a lot of the talent that has been being developed over the course of the past few years from 2020 to now finally get an opportunity to fight for the big show we had a record number of contender series you know australians and new zealanders fight on the contender series this year it feels like you know outside of a handful of fighters on the regional scene right now the scene is kind of almost resetting and i feel like in part that's mainly to attribute to what has been kind of the lack of matchmaking across the regional scene to really push talent like yourself forward to that next level colby and i wanted to get your thoughts on just kind of this reset period and when you reflect on the momentum australia has had you look at just the champions you guys the sports are get don't you know the sports only getting younger in australia i think and especially you know with yourself george mangos harry webb john mccaleff just to name a few of the young talent it feels like the sport's in a better place than ever what do you make of just the overall scene kind of getting younger and just this kind of reset period more or less where fighters are still looking to make a name or they're looking to kind of build up that resume I think it just shows the quality that we have over here in Australia, New Zealand, of the athletes where our top guys are going off after opening belts and the promotions here, and then they're getting signed, they're winning and they're getting signed, which is what you want to see. You don't want to see the top guys from a region get selected, send eight of them off, and they come back with eight losses. That looks shit on the region, but if we're going out there and our guys are winning, getting finishes, it makes our whole scene elevate and looks better. As for like the state of the I don't focus too much on other divisions, but say, let's just go better. Mate. Obviously, here's this is example. I think in a good six to eight months, it's, it's going to be that fresh pool again. But obviously, now it's just hard because Cody got signed, well deserved. Aaron Tao got his shot, he didn't get up, which is unfortunate. Then you have um, Ido, I think, the eternal champ. I'm not too sure what he's doing at the moment. And then who else is at the top? Rod was at the top, but he obviously lost. And then it's myself. So without them, other opportunities of people fighting, which fair play. Like I, I even last year, I thought I was like, these guys deserve it. They've got more fights, more wins, more finishes. They are that step above me. But now I'm almost there at that level where I can get sort of uh, just pushed to the next level, whether that's contender, straight signing, whatever it can be sort of thing, however that happens. So I'm almost there, which is a good thing. But I was... It's somewhat frustrating because you want to have the chance to fight guys at the best in your region, but also it's given me this exposure and this opportunity to go fight overseas and get this international experience, which is I've said since day one, since I've turned pro, I do want to get a couple of overseas fights under my belt before I go and fight overseas because in the UFC, because the last thing you want to do is your first international fight is the biggest fight of your life. Look, it may not... Um, affect some people mentally but i know i would much rather prefer have that reps of spending a week overseas in a foreign country like even little things like different bed different access to food water different weight cutting scenarios because it's very easy once you get familiar if you're fighting that melbourne sydney or gold coast constantly gets you sort of know the layout you know where things are you know how everything works but when you get thrown into another country and the whole process is different i feel like you can get a lot of growth from that so i've been very fortunate to have these overseas experiences now where i've learned what it's like to do this overseas so the core comes i feel like i'm ready to go anywhere over the world and fight now definitely and then i think like you mentioned you know just earlier being able to go over and fight for kangoo fight night and just being able to get those reps super important as a young fighter and it feels like the camaraderie that we've seen from especially you and cassip murdoch you know it's been great to see the two of you really take this challenge and just not adversity but this new approach really in stride be able to go over to a new country prepare together train together and have that kind of level of camaraderie in this kind of new adventure so how important has it been for you like when you go over and get ready to fight for kangu what's that ex just that experience of being able to go overseas and 
seep the beauty through the fight game. I think a big overlooked aspect is with the fight game especially is being able to go travel, being able to see new things, being able to be accustomed to new situations. So, you know, when you go over and get ready to fight for Kangu and you've got a guy like Kasib with you, you're training together, you're living together, you're eating together, you're doing almost everything together. What does that mean to you to have, you know, someone as young as you and hungry as you in this sport there with you to share the journey, but also just being able to enjoy kind of the liberties and freedoms that come with the fight game with traveling? Oh, bro, it's incredible. Like, I, like I always say, I'm very blessed to do what I do because, like, I'm 25 years old. I'm getting paid to go to Bali to see my face on billboards and fight main event in front of thousands of people at, like, a super club. Like, it's just it's surreal, realistically. Like, it's things you dream of as a kid sort of thing. And having somebody as a good friend, teammate, Casey, to share them experiences with having Joe as well, it's just – it's a very cool experience of a sense like a team unit. It's like the three of us are going off and we're not, I don't like this term going to war or anything, but we're going overseas to fight people. We're trying to take our head off and we don't want to take their heads off. So it's a very sort of, it's a unique team building experience. I feel like that's where relationships between coaches and fighters and teammates can really deepen it. And you really sort of just get to know people because you're living with them. You seem like the most vulnerable on fight week. So um, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Like I said, I'm very blessed to do what I do. Definitely. And Colby, I want to thank you so much for your time, first and foremost. A very different tone, I should add, to our first conversa conversation. It feels like <laughs> just kind of when you think about it, it's like weird. Like if you go and watch the old interview to this interview, it's night and day. It feels like just the two of us, I think, especially it speaks volumes to how far we, I think we've both come in, in the sport from me covering the sport. Mm -hmm. Young, kind of brash energetic you know young adult and then you young kid in the sport coming up it feels like we've both just come into this interview and just life i think in general with a very different perspective and i think it's honestly yes seeing what you've gone through in, in your life and in your journey has been you know just beyond motivating for myself to be able to apply those practices teachings to my life so i wanted to thank you first and foremost for not necessarily being there during the dark days but being a a great resource and a great person to go to in the space and confide in you know just between the two of us of course and first and foremost thank you for that and then on another note i've got to ask you because i know you're a big reader and i know for you reading is such a, a focal part about you know just your life being able to read gain knowledge from books what is on the Colby Thickness itinerary right now when he's not training or he's not fighting? What what podcasts are you listening to? What what books are you reading? What what are you kind of looking at to get more kind of perspective on life if you have any, you know, recommendations for the audience at home? So there's podcasts I really like. It's called Modern Wisdom by Chris Williamson. I've probably been listening to it for probably two or three years now. And the thing I like about it is he just has a very broad range of guests. So someone you have no idea about, you can spend two hours listen, listening and learning to a new topic. As for books, I'm currently reading The um, Prince by Mike Bellion, which is quite an interesting read. It's very old school po uh, politics, how to conquer power. It's a bit of a controversial book just because how he talks about the ends justify the means and everything like that. But I think it's very cool to see ancient wisdom from some of the people who were elite at their times and i always think if you can study the old greats imagine what they'll do in this day and age sort of thing so i think there's lots of values in not necessarily seeking ancient texts in a sense but finding that old school sort of wisdom so yeah what a wisdom is a good podcast just from a broad range of topics super interesting to learn about then for the current read i've got yeah the prince which is fascinating so far actually Definitely. And then I got to ask you just on a final note, of course, we talk a lot about the year that you've had. And of course, congrats on all the success. I think that that's been probably the biggest takeaway for this year is just seeing that all it takes is really one good year to get everything back on track and seeing the year that you've had in 2024. I think a lot of other young fighters can take note of it. So I think asking you what your goals are for 2025 from a fighting perspective would be counterintuitive to the conversation we've had. But if you do have any fighting goals for 2025, I would love to hear them, I guess. And then if not that, what is your message to a young fighter who maybe might find themselves in a similar situation as yourself, struggling to stay healthy, struggling to get fights? And then just what's your advice to them to turn those things around and have the year that you've had in 2024, I guess? Obviously, for goals, it's just keep winning. It's as simple as that. Things come when you win, keep winning. But I like the second part of the question. I think the biggest thing is is that take that long term, especially for young fighters. I can speak from this because I've been through this. Whereas by eight, nineteen or 
20, I was eight and one as an amateur. I'm a champion, ranked number one in everything. And then you had coming up a lot of momentum and everything like that. And then to have a so very like it is, it's a slow start to get to six and hours a pro. It took me almost four or five years to get it in this sense. But it's having that first thing's having that long-term goal and just reassuring yourself that you are going to get there. And then the second thing is just sort of confining others and just get a good team around you, have a good coach, have good friends, have good people who what it is, is honestly, is you will have dark times in there. We've got to have people that you can share it with, people who resonate with what you're feeling and just trust in your environment and trust in the people around you. And as long as you have that good team around you, the um, process will take care of itself. Stay diligent, stick to a plan, whatever that is, whether that's just staying fit and healthy, ready for fights, whether it's rehabbing injuries. But I think, yeah, the biggest thing is just have that good support network around you and don't feel like you have to carry the weight of everything on your own shoulders because that's, I think, I see what a lot of people do and they can get in their own head with it. But if you have good teammates, good friends, good coaches where you can share your problems with, it makes it a lot easier because... I know people sometimes don't want to burden people with their problems and that, but I think if they're your proper teammates, they're not going to want to help you out. And that's from more of like the injury perspective and that, because you see fighters so often, they'll get a couple of injuries and it can do their head in. But if you have yeah, a good network around you, I think that's the most crucial thing. Definitely. And I think that I speak for everyone, including myself, that I'm incredibly excited for the fight on November 23rd. And I think that on that note, just having an excellent support system around you and definitely the support system and team that you guys have got at Freestyle MMA, I think is one of the best teams to look at from not just this perspective of the fight game, but also how people can rally behind each other and make life better for each other and help each other in their goals. So all the best to you, Colby, in your upcoming fight. I can't wait to watch it personally. I think it's going to be a great night of fights for you and Justin Van Heerden and to the fans at home watching do be sure to check out Colby Thickness on Hex Fight Series 33 I think it's going to be a great night of fights November 23rd don't miss it it's been me Dan from Fight Wave have a great day guys